Morning guys, it's Saturday morning and I'm doing a quick video on different types of lenses. Everyone on Facebook requested that I do a video on that. So I'm going to do it in two separate parts. Um, in this part I'm going to talk about, I'll compare prime lenses with um, zoom lens versus like one of those kit lenses that you get when you purchase your camera. Um, so I'll compare those, talk about the different aperture settings that it comes with. And... Um, in the next video, which is going to be the second part, I'll talk about um, you know what lens you should get for let's say if you're shooting kids, you know because there's specific lens. I mean it's not like just one lens that you buy and run with it. There are different options you can take depending on um, what you want. Um, so next video we'll talk about different types of lenses for event photography, wedding photography, newborn stuff, things like that. All right. Um, let's compare these lenses right now. Here I have a prime lens, okay? Prime lens is basically you have a fixed focal range, which means that you cannot zoom in and zoom out. You, you know, if, if it's 50 millimeter, then that's, it's, that's what you, the focal range is going to be. You can't zoom in and make it, you know, 70 or zoom out and make it 20. That's it. Um, good things about prime lenses are they're extremely good in quality. Uh, the picture quality is, is just phenomenal. You get a really nice bokeh, which is your out of focus um, area. And with prime lenses, you could get like 1.8 aperture, 1.4 aperture, which pretty much really opens up your aperture to give you to let more light in. So it's perfect for like low light situation. And it's also perfect for if you just want to focus on a really small part and blow up everything else. Um, you know, 1.8, 1.4. At 1.4, maybe you'll have a, a little, the picture may be a little soft. Um, but again, it all depends on what lens you're using. Um, much lighter in weight and, you know, if you compare the quality of prime lens with the zoom lens, uh, well, quality is obviously it's great, but if let's say the zoom lens and a prime lens were comparable quality-wise, this will cost you way, way less, at least at least three times less than than the zoom lens. So, zoom lens is it's, it's if you're on a budget, maybe 50 millimeter zoom lens would be perfect for you. You just have to be careful before you purchase because if you own one of those really entry-level DSLRs like D40, D60, D3000, D3100, D5000, and I believe D5100 does not have the built-in autofocus motor inside, which means that your lens has to have one. Otherwise, you can, otherwise you'll have to focus. Um, you'll have to do manual focus. You won't be able to do autofocus, uh, which is like the camera does it for you when you select a certain point. So, uh, Nikon just announced a new lens, 50mm lens, which is 50mm f1.8G um, AFS. So that lens, it's, it's going to have a built-in motor. That lens, you could use it for your entry-level DSLR, DSLR because it has a built-in motor. It's, they announced it, I think it's going to go for $220. The one without the motor, the one that I have right here, I don't need it because my camera has a built-in motor inside. So this one was 135. So without the motor, it's 135. With the motor, it's 220. And I think the one with the motor, I think it's going to have better image quality. For 220, I think it's 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 a phenomenal price. So look into it. Now the reason why I'm saying this is because zoom lens, comparable quality. My God, it's. Uh, right now, 24 to 70 uh, millimeter f2.8 is going. For, I think it's because of the tsunami in Japan is going for I think eighteen hundred dollars, nineteen hundred dollars, something like that. So compare the price and you'll see. All right, so here I have a zoom lens. Uh, difference between zoom and aperture: you could zoom. You know, hold on, I locked it. So you could zoom and change your focal range, okay? You can go from, depending on what zoom you have, you could go from 24 to 75 or 28, 
24 to 70, 28 to 75. It all depends on what lens you have. You know, some are 24 to 120. Um, anyway, this has a fixed aperture, uh, which means f 2.8. So even if I zoom in, it's going to stay at f 2.8 unless I want to change that f 2.8 to f 5.6 or f 8 or f 11. But the biggest aperture that you're going to get on this lens is f 2.8, which is also it's 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 not bad for zoom lens. That's I think two is I've, I've seen the lowest. Um, so 2.8 is it's, it's it's pretty good actually for low light situation. Obviously, this will give you 1.8. So for low light situation, this would be better obviously because 1.8 would open up the aperture even more. So there's more light coming in. All right, so. Fixed aperture is obviously good. Anytime you have a variable aperture, which is this lens, uh, one of the kit lenses. Now this is actually better than a kit lens, but that's that's what I have to to, to show you. Now with this lens, uh, when you same thing, it's a zoom lens. When you zoom in, the aperture will change. Okay, right now it's at f 2.8. Okay, when I start zooming in, the aperture is going to start changing. You know like f3.2, f3.5, and at the max, it's going to go to, I think, f4.5. So, that's not good at all, especially in a low-light situation. If you if you want to take a portrait, let's say, uh, or you know, a close-up picture of anything, you zoom in, and all of a sudden, it changes from 2.8 to 4.5, and the aperture shrinks, so you're blocking the light. And what if you want to get a smaller area in focus and blow up everything else? But at f4.5, things will start getting, you know, sharper. So you lose on two ends, not just the light, because even if you're shooting with this outdoors, but you want a little tiny area in focus and blow up everything else. At 4.5, obviously, 2.8 will give you a way better um, bokeh, which is your outer focus, that blurry part. What I would suggest, I'm going to do another video and tell you exactly like what type of lens you need for a certain type of photography. Then you can decide if you want to get a prime lens or a zoom lens. Okay. Now, even if you get a prime lens, it's not just 50 millimeter. You know, you could get a 60 millimeter. You can get 85 millimeter. It, it so it all depends on um, what you want to do. Okay. I personally like to have my distance uh, when I'm when I'm shooting so sometimes if if you're doing that maybe uh, especially for portraits you know 85 millimeter you could try uh, 70 to 200 really heavy and expensive lens um, you could try third-party lens and, and and see how that works out for you quick thing I want to tell you when you're looking at different types of lenses um, especially those zoom lenses um, just be careful uh, because sometimes they will tell you maximum aperture and they'll tell you maximum aperture 2.8. That does not mean you're getting 2.8. You have to read uh, the range. So if, there, if it's a variable aperture, it will say 2.8 dash and it will say whatever it goes up to when you zoom in. So it may say 2.8 dash 4 which means it starts off at 2.8 but when you zoom in it will go up to 4 automatically you have no control over that all right so i just wanted to show you guys quickly uh what happens to your f-stop which is right here same information you can also view it um here as well when i zoom in watch how this is your variable aperture which is one of your kit lenses However, a kit lens will, will probably not, it's not going to be 2.8, it's probably going to say 3.5, but when you zoom in, it will change the aperture. So look, as I zoom in, it will change the aperture automatically. So if I select 50 millimeter, let's say, which is right here, I'm at 4.2. Look at how much light this thing is going to block. All right, if I zoom in a little further, 4.5. So if you have a kit lens, Right now, I'm zoom, zoomed out all the way. So if you have a kit lens, it will probably say 3.5. And when you zoom in, it will start changing. Probably go up to 5.6. So that is not good in low light situation. Two quick pictures, guys. Uh, this was taken 
with a zoom lens f 2.8 um, I kept everything the same when I took the other picture um, same ISO ISO 800 um, I believe it was 40th of a second all right so the next picture now this was with a with a zoom lens fixed aperture okay next picture when I zoomed it at 50 millimeter the aperture changed from 2.8 to 4.2 and you could see it's really dark not only that but you could see the lamp it's it became a little sharper and it's obviously more distracting so even if you have plenty of light uh, to work with you're still gonna have uh, the issue of getting um, not completely blurry background so it, it's going to hurt you and this is actually better than a kit lens um, kit lens the aperture probably would have been at 5.6 the picture would have been much much darker so keep that in mind um, I suggest that people purchase the body separately and the lens separately now in some cases you just cannot do that some of the really entry level DSLRs they don't give you that option and if your budget is tight your budget is tight you have to work with what you have so in that case you have no choice you have to go with kit lens but you know future you could save money and upgrade it to a, a, a better better camera body and better lens all right stay tuned for the next uh, video which is going to be on what lens you need for different types of uh, you know photography like if you're doing event photography weddings kids newborn and we'll talk about that until next time you keep clicking